Hello everyone, this is Hacken. Today I'm going to talk about Lorentz system and loop structure in Rhino. Lorentz system is a mathematical term, and I suggest that you search it in Google and go to Wikipedia that you will find a explanation here. And you will also see the motion picture showing, giving you an idea of what say, the Lorentz system is like. As you see, it is a complex loop on which the point follows the path and goes ever on and on. So why is it important? It is a classic spatial mathematical system in beautiful forms. And I view it as an advanced version of MobiStrip in regards to architectural relationships. In addition, it poses a question and a challenge to Grasshopper users. How do we create a loop in Grasshopper? Different people have different approaches, probably. And here I'm going to introduce you to the loop tool in Grasshopper. And its name is Hoopsnake. You can download it from Rhino or uh, Food for Rhino. And uh, it's free. Why should we use the loop to represent it? I would say that we are not mathematicians to precisely describe the system. And uh, you know, from an engineering perspective, the way we're going to describe a system in a three, 3D modeling is just keeps the difference to a minimum level that can be ignored. And as I said, the key idea behind the grasshopper uh, scripts uh, is the logic. It is a logic that gets us to the desired result. If you have some knowledge or backgrounds in mathematics, you you may have on kind of have an understanding of uh, the technique we're gonna use today, which is like the induction. Well, it's not exactly the same, but I would say that it's quite similar. So the way um, the hoopsnake works is like this. Let's uh, take a look and evaluate the hoop snake here. It has it takes four inputs. S means the starting data, as it says. D the data, B termination condition, T trigger. We can ignore that for now actually. Let's explain one by one. Uh, and starting data what well, it's just as it suggested, um, the starting point, or you could say the base case. So we have like a base case as an input, and uh, it goes through the hoop snake, which will return us, return you a, a second case. And uh, somehow, through some logic, we input the second case and will give us the third case and go on and on and we will give it as a termination status which just input a number say how many rounds how many terms it should take and uh, that's it so uh, let's see what we're gonna do here in Rhino well, before we study on Rhino, let's check what the Wikipedia says. So the Rhino system is really based on three equations. We have x, y, z, which are x, y, z coordinates of the points. And we have three other parameters, sigma, rho, and beta. And this equation gives us like the slope at each individual point. And we have the individual point which should define the difference. As I said, for instance, we, we do not precisely describe the system. We just need to control it to a minimum level, the, the difference to a controllable, ignorable level. And then simply said, it's just I just give it a, the set size a very small number. In our case, I would suggest um, 0 0.01 would be defined. So we should start from the 
starting points that's uh, I would just say one we construct a point with coordinates 1 1 1 and input which uh, it goes through the loop world it does nothing so it also returns us 1 1 1 here's logic we need to construct input the first the, the, the base case the first the starting point goes through the loop and return us something and this something will do will go through some logic procedures which will return us the second case and we will input the second case and we'll get the third case with the third case we'll get to the fourth case so the idea is we're gonna use a list which will be incremented by one at a time so let's say we are using the point and we will uh, create the new points at a time the equation we just go to math tab and uh, we have the expression follow the same steps here the first equation has y x and sigma just input x y sigma let's see what the starting point the starting uh, case the example here we'll just take the data here row 28 sigma 10 beta 8 over 3 let's keep it down we have row 8 sigma 10 and uh, beta is 8 over 3 double check on that sigma 10 it's right So it's sigma times y minus x and we also need the sigma 0 I will rename it as sigma So this gives us a slope, the slope times step size, which we will say 0.01, which just to find and plus the uh, original coordinate say this is dx over dt t stands for the time actually you can just review it as like the um, step so how many steps should we go um, so x coordinate plus the step difference is a new co is a new x coordinate and copy that Next time we need x, y, z and the row. So z and sigma is changed to row. Input z. Times y plus y and the equation is x times 
row minus z minus y. It's good. And let's go to the next step. Again, it's x, y, z and beta x, y, z, beta, oh sorry. Uh, I forgot about the row. Row is 28 and beta is 8 over 3 And the base change to Z plus Z. Check if this thing is correct. It should be changed to equation X times Y minus beta times Z. It should be right. And based on the coordinates, we just create uh, the new point. x to x, y to y, z to z see it looks right to me and day here we go so we have the base case and we get to uh, this is a logic we have but it is not all of them. Actually, we said, as we said, we need a list to receive the new point. If, the, if we have the list to receive a new point, then we, again we will have the list as the new output, right? And each step follows the same format as we know. So here we need some, make some little change here. What we get from F, the feedback, is never a single list. It should uh, not a single point. It should be a, a list. Just for the first case, the base case, the, the list is a list of size 1, which is, means the list has only one item in it. So, but anyway, it's still a list. So, what's we going to do? Um, we should get the item, I mean the point out of the list. Here we go. And uh, for the new newly created point, we need to insert the point back to the list. We use insert items. This is the original list and this is the new, new item. And here comes the question, where should we insert it? Well, actually, you either put it, say, if you get a point from the very bottom, or you say you get the last point of the original list and use the last point of the list to get the new point, then insert back to the last, um, to the bottom of the list. If you get the, the first one, the first item from the original list, then you should insert the new point back into the very front place of the original list. Because you should follow the same format, the same logic all the way down. Here's what we're going to do. As we say, 0, which is the first one, and we insert it back, which is again the first one. And I th believe it should be, it should just work fine. But we will see. And I would say we still need the termination condition, and we just put a number, say 100. Based on your set size, you decide what kind of number you should put in this. But anyway, as 
strongly recommend that uh, you do not put a very large number here because your computer might just run out of memory maybe not out of memory but it just slows down and crash probably you need to be patient enough to for the graph software to get really, really some kind of result let's see oh I see there's some problem here mm, let's debug Somehow I made a mistake because I used the point as the input of the original list. That should be the problem. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I made a mistake um, in the multi multiplication here because while it's not the slope times the original coordinate, it should be it should be the slope times uh, the step size, which is here. Well, sometimes you just uh, yeah, sometimes I do mis make mistakes and some. Um, Not quite good to see. Uh, oh, here we go. It's calculating. Takes some time, but uh, you see. Yes. You see the pattern here? Well, actually, we can use the uh, curve to receive the points, I mean, to interpolate it, uh, which will turn us the uh, curve yeah. but anyway um, I really, I, I, think, I really think personally I think the points are really beautiful so let's try 200 or take some time anyway. You can you can try the number yourself. I mean the two, I mean the two hundred two as the as termination condition. If you say a thousand, well, it will probably just crash or or not. You just need to be patient. The thing is, here gives us two things because we know Grasshopper. We use Grasshopper as like one of the basic tools for parametric design and of course we have parameters here but the thing is we do not get immediate feedback in our case I mean with the loops because every time we say we, we change some of the parameters here uh, Sigma or whatever yeah we change it a little bit but anyway uh, Well, say it, it changes here. It see this little. Excuse me. Let's just do it again. See what's gonna happen. You see, it should follow a different. Actually, it's a totally different pattern. And here is one of the limitations I would like to talk about with Grasshopper. With a loop, we do not get immediate feedbacks in parametric design just in this case because we change the parameters well the graphic does not change with us and the second thing is with the termination conditions here I just put a hundred if you if you say 500 1000 even 5000 10,000 if you're a crazy guy. You just can you can you can you computer generate something like this? I I will probably say no. Another 
limitation of Grasshopper is like uh, because Grasshopper is the visual programming, it takes much of the computer memory to deal with the graphic stuff. I mean, is there a way we could do it better? A powerful, a more powerful tool we could use to represent the Lorentz system more easily with immediate feedback? I would say yes. Like in Grasshopper, we could use Python and Process and do that. That is like the, the next two tutorials I'm planning on. And hopefully it should be useful for your future projects. Well, because in most of the cases, this is good enough. This is already powerful and uh, fun. So hope you have enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.